This time next week, when we have our next show, uh, our guys are going to be reporting to training camp for the first week of training camp in Charleston, South Carolina. They'll be working out at Citadel or the Citadel University. Um, so and this is something that Doc's done a lot in, in, in his years in Boston, L.A. He always did kind of destination type of uh, training camps where they would go. Uh, um, I think he went to Europe one year with the, the Boston. Um, I think they went to... Uh, I think they went to Rhode Island when he was with the Clippers. I mean, they, he's kind of gone all over the place with his with his uh, with his teams in the past, um, and he's been trying to do this for a few years now. Uh, with COVID, he wasn't able to, to do that with the Sixers, so this is the first time he's been able to do that. Um, so my question, uh, Eric, is what are the pros to uh, not being at home um, for training camp? Um, I mean, Philadelphia is the only place that I was at that we we went away for training camp. Interesting. Um, Seattle, we did, we didn't in Cleveland we didn't um most of the teams provide hotels for you when you have the two days so you don't have to go back and forth um I didn't really see anything wrong with um like a pro to me the to me the really the biggest pro is that you have a chance to create that bond because it's just you all. So you hang out, you go out to eat together, you're, you're together all the time. It's probably the most togetherness you, you would have during the whole season um, because it's just you all. Um, so we, I can remember we went, you know, we went to several places, but the one particular place, we went to Penn State. We did all like almost everything together because we were at Penn State. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like a college campus, like it's really, Nothing we can do, but um, we were having, we were there. We went to Penn State football games. We went out to eat. We sort of had our routine. Um, but it is training camp, so you, you know, you got to rest up. You can't do as much. But to me, it's really just the the bonding that you can get um, with your team. Um, but you can also accomplish that at home. Um, with guys staying in the hotel and, um, you know, going back and forth. So, but our training, I, I, I can see it more when I play more so than now because it's so limited as far as how much you can practice. Um, and, I mean, limited on the two days you can have where it was no restrictions with us. So Wild we, West. Yeah, we went all day. So it was kind of helpful to be right right there. So you didn't have to drive, you didn't have to do anything. They would you would come down and from the lobby and pick you up, take you to the to the gym. Um so it was convenient. Um mm -hmm. you didn't have they you had to you get back to the hotel, they got meals for you, or you can go out to eat and they kind of everything is, is there for you. It's sort of like, you know, football is like training campus. Everything is right there. Mm -hmm. um, for playing when I play, I think it worked out better because it helped you kind of eliminate a lot of stuff and a lot of, you know, the extra driving or getting stuck in traffic or coming there and didn't have to go home. And, you know, it was, you know, say for instance, you stay – 30 minutes away, you know, that's, that's an hour there and back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Whereas if you're two minute drive from practice, that's four minutes. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. That's a pro as far as the being able to take advantage of your time and the bonding. I feel like when you're going out of town too, you're kind of saying ahead of time, bond right whereas like if you're just having a training camp it's just all right it's training camp but when you're saying okay we're going out it feels like that's already kind of a um an expected thing an expectation that you know the team building you know ahead of time um but yeah i would say less distractions chemistry building camaraderie um we have the makings of a really tight team uh, beside the fact that you know hard recruited about five of these guys because he's already like best friends with them so that's cool mm -hmm. um but just in general, I, I just think I want to get to the point where they can just scold each other on the court and there are no hurt feelings or any kind of spolstra verse, 
Butler fights. You know, I, I want there to be complete, you know, just on the same page, same goal in mind, everything. Um, I feel like this could help us get there. Uh, they're already tight to a degree, but I think they can get even tighter and be one, um, as cliche as that sounds. Um, I will say, though, Doc did this in Boston. Yeah, they really they really helped with some of those teams. I mean, <laughs> I mean like they, they, won, they won one of the years they, they, they did. They did, but there's still, some of those guys are still feuding to this day. I mean, like. Yeah, I, I think a lot of it's going to come down to. <clears throat> Garnett, to, Pierce, and Allen you know, still, you know, can't be in the same. Of, a lot of it's going to come down to the players. I and mean, on from this standpoint, it's, it's not going to really be up to Doc how this plays out when they leave. Them. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, whether they're going to build the respect, build the trust, um, whether that's going to be there, the the more that that respect and trust is there and you show you people you care for them, the more you have that, the better situation it'll be. The, the, the guy will be able to say something to someone without them taking it personally. Mm. But in, in that guy saying something, he, he needs to be able to, to represent, you know, what he says. You know, the last thing you want is is a guy telling you you need to play hard and he doesn't play hard. Um, that the, that's when the issues come. So that that situation really doesn't matter if you go somewhere else or not. Um, if you're going to develop that that trust and respect and the care, so you know they they gonna have to have that. No matter if they go into you know South Carolina or mm-hmm. even like the Lakers when I play going to Honolulu. Mm-hmm. So it really doesn't matter. It's cool to have a in the, in those cases. It's cool to have a guy like Embiid who pretty much like gives himself out every night and, and throws his body around. So it's like your your leader does it by example, you know. Um, and Tucker's another outspoken guy, but that guy lays it out there too. So we have a few guys who just lay it out there who don't take plays off. So I don't. It's cool to have that in the locker room. Yeah, I mean, but that has to be the majority. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it has to be everybody. That to be your culture in your locker room. Mm-hmm. Yep. Now, now is the uh, the traveling because you said you you only did the uh, go, uh, destination training camp uh, with the Sixers. Is that like an old school coach thing? Because I mean, Coach Brown, old school guy. Um, Doc probably come from the same cloth. You know, I had George Carl in Seattle, and he didn't do it. Yeah, interesting. Uh, but Seattle was also. <clears throat> one of the first teams that really like had their own practice facility mm-hmm. back when I played. So they had, we had a practice facility with two courts. So it was just why well, go somewhere and we got this right here. Yeah. yeah. So they just gave it, they got us hotel rooms <clears throat> that were like right across the street from the um, practice facility. Uh, okay. And when they did that, we just, we ended up just, you just stay at the hotel and, Go over there from Starbucks and playing basketball. Guys would go go home because a lot of people stay like in Bellevue and Kirkland on the other side of water, and, and it took a long time to get to practice. Um, you know, like for 8 a.m. practice, you had to leave really early. You get stuck on that <clears throat> expressway. It was who knows when you were going to get there. So it <laughs> provided, you know, kind of a, a way for you to cut out all of the, um, you know, the going back and forth, especially in between practices. So I know a lot of guys stay – at home at night, stayed at the hotel in between. Um, I did that in Cleveland, um, in Seattle. I, mean, I was a young guy. I was by myself most of the time. I just stayed at the hotel overnight because, you know, I younger, I had to be there so early mm-hmm. <laughs> before everybody came to get taped and do all that stuff. Yeah, you don't want to be late. Yeah, so I, I, <laughs> I ended up staying over there, but that that works out. That's fine too. It's just you have the, you know, no matter the, at the end of the day, if you want to kick it and hang out, you're gonna do it no matter where you are. Yeah. Yeah, and I know. Well, I think the um, the year we traded for Tobias and Jimmy Butler, and I remember there was a whole thing that came out that MB kind of led the way and kind of having the chemistry and camaraderie. He was having everybody meet down in like the hotel, like bars and stuff. And they were watching like other games together and stuff. And ironically Simmons would, wasn't really a part of those. He didn't really come down for yeah, that. We, we did that. We did that all the time. Um, you know, we used to, and then a lot of times you start doing it. The team will, you know, back when we played, the team would kind of sense that we were doing it 
and they would give us, you know, like be like, hey, we'll cover the bill. It was it was time we would go and our bill was paid. Wow. Nice. Um, but yeah, we we did that a lot. Um and, and you know, in Philly it was like we didn't always have everybody, but it was it was a group of you guys. It was very common to see a group of us go out to eat. And that was like sort of the thing to do. Like we would go out to eat, watch some games, and then kind of, you know, do, then you do your own thing from there. You know, some mm-hmm. guys hung out, some people met up with people and, you know, we kind of did what you do, you know, mm-hmm. um, not putting any, you know, that's, that's how it is. Yeah. Um, yeah you sure. do what you do from that point on, like after we eat and, but at the end of the day and shoot around, come be ready. Yeah. yeah. I think Joe Bias was the orchestrator last year of that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So be curious to see, but well, maybe Harden takes that position now. Yeah. I mean, it was like, we didn't really, it was usually me or, I mean, you could say like it was me or Aaron, like, but it was usually we all did it together. So it wasn't really, we would be like, yeah, where are we going to eat? And mm-hmm. then we kind of got to the point where you travel so much, like we kind of knew who was down, who wasn't. This is where we were going. You know? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. We went to Toronto. We would go to the, you know, um, you know, we stayed the four seasons. We would go to the Ruth Chris or the Morton's, whichever one was right across the street. Mm-hmm. Um so that's you just kind of knew that that's what we were doing, and you know, nobody really. That's the point you want to get get at, right? Where it just it just comes down to, hey, where are we going? Instead of like, let's organize this thing with like us. It's like you want to just like have it so you're already just hanging out all the time. Yeah, and- I mean, we did it like like we did it in Cleveland. Um, I was a little older, so I didn't do it as much as some of the guys. Um, but we we were close in that group in Cleveland, Seattle. Um, I was playing with a bunch of old men in Seattle. Like we, we would, I would go out and with different guys, different times, but we never really had like collectively a bunch of guys going to. Oh, same. really? Oh no, because no. they were just so set in their ways. Yeah, they were just so like different. Like <laughs> they were just. Like it was different back then. Like is I was it, it was just personality or was it age? Well, no, it was just because guys were older, it was different. It, it, it was like I came out of my first year, my rookie year in Seattle, I was 22. And I believe my second or third year, I was still the youngest on the team. Dang. So, you know, that never had I'll come in at 22 and be one of the older guys. <laughs> never happened. Nowadays, but yeah, it was like it was just different like that. So um, you know, I, I came in, I, I know I was like 22 and I think Gary and Sean was like 28 and 27. And then almost everybody else on the team, except maybe Big Irv or Chef, was like another, Sherelle came in with me. Like it was just, I think it was just those three were the only three younger than those guys. You're right. That was a pretty Everybody else was like in the thirties. Man. So it was, it's just different. And with the Sixers, you guys were all around the same the same age group that time. Yes, yes. The nucleus, we were all around the same age. Mm-hmm. That that's where it was kind of different, especially for us. Like we, myself, Aaron, AI, and Theo, a lot of guys that all came in at the same time, mm-hmm. were all around the same age. Yeah, you're right, man. That's pretty older. I was definitely an older roster. You get a lot of guys. You get a lot of guys born in the early '60s on that roster, man. Yes, that was a you got a lot of guys. Man, you had. I didn't even know you had. They had some of these guys on the team. Yeah, Craig, Craig. I don't remember Craig Elo on that team. Terry yes. Cummings. I mean, Her- David, Hawkins, David Wingate, Hurst. Yeah, I had all those guys. David Millen was '64. Sam Perkins was Ron Kersey over there. Like, uh, yeah, left shrimp was early '60s. Kowski, all them guys, man. They just yeah, man. When like, I could hang out with all those guys, like. Depending on where we go, Sam Perkins, Perk was my guy. So it was like, but we were, I never really hung out with a lot of them at the same time. But, the, you know, he seemed like they were all grabbing me, like, all right, rookie with me this weekend. <laughs> like, I kind of, it was like, I, like each one of them kind of gave me something. Um, Hersey was like, you know, fatherhood, family guy. Um, Sam Perkins was showing me how to dress. <laughs> <laughs> how, to, 
you know, you know like, you're getting big matching. smooth. You know, you're getting the dressing advice. Yeah. Right? yeah. So you know, uh, <laughs> you know, Nate, you know, being leader and you know, leading your team and Detlef was who I actually worked out with. Detlef. Okay. That's who I worked out with. So like from a that level was like a workout guy, financial tips. That was that all came from Della. That used to be on the plane writing his checks and filling out bills. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> he would show me. And then that's what we got to do to back, soon, back then. We didn't have the, you know, just go online and kind of do your bills and all that stuff. You had yeah. to physically write a check. So um, but yeah, it was David Wingate, you know, it was great for me to show how to be a reserve. How to you know sit over there and encourage your teammates and body language and face and be, be professional. All that doesn't matter. Yeah, man, it was you know Greg Anthony showed me like it was like all them dudes like showed me something. I got something from all of them, so I wouldn't change my path for nothing. I know it's not made for everybody, but that path helped me out a great deal. Now, even the next year, you had Dale Ellis on your team. Yep. <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah. You actually guys, you got you guys got one guy who was actually older than everyone else on the team. You got yeah. one guy who was older than all these dudes. Uh -huh. Damn. Yeah. You got Jerome Kersey that year too. You played with a lot of those vets of like the nineties, man. Yes. You got you got you got to play with a lot of them. Yes. Every year I was in Seattle, we had older guys. Man. Yeah, that's quite a collection of older vets, dude. Vin Baker is one of the young dudes on your team. Yeah, Van came with Sean left. So mm. they were trading for each other. That's right. Yeah, there you go. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.